This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur and today we have this case of a 65-year-old gentleman who was having intermittent cataract. The surgery is being done under a tropical anesthesia. The side ports are made. Intracambral lignocaine is placed inside the eye followed by staining of the anterior capsule under the air bubble. Dispersive OVD containing chondritin sulfate is used to pressurize the chamber. The main incision is created. Of course, the challenge is going to be uh, getting the rexis right because it's a full and intermittent lens. The initial puncture is done by the 26 number needle, followed by creation rexis by using the forceps. My plan is to do a two stage rexis or the whirling technique. I'm going to take a call once I handle the capsule and once I come to know the situation on hand. Since the capsule is behaving quite well, I have decided to go ahead with the whirling technique uh, wherein using the small flap, I just keep on enlarging the rexus. Now this decision is taken intraoperatively once I feel confident that the capsule is behaving well and the chamber is quite well maintained. It's much more easier to control the tear of a very thin flap compared to a slightly bigger flap. So as we can see here, the rexus is very much well under control and I could have a decent sized about 4.5 to 5 mm rexus. Since it's in a mature intermittent cataract, I'm not doing any hydrodissection, there's no nucleus rotation. I directly I'm going in with my phaco probe. Initial settings are for the epinucleus removal and uh, the superficial epinucleus in the cortex is aspirated. Uh, the nucleus is manipulated with second instrument to ensure that it is free. The underlying nucleus is slightly brunescent. I'm going to create a small trench to begin with and then divide the nucleus into smaller fragments using the vertical chop technique. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus to get a firm grip. The sharp chopper goes down vertically and then laterally separate, resulting in the first chop. The chopping is continued until I have around 6 smaller fragments. The settings are changed to quadrant removal mode and now is the time to emulsify each of them in a very controlled manner. Uh, 
the chopper through my non-dominant hand is always kept in such a position so that the fragments which are being emulsified are kept under control and they don't jump around and hit the coil endothelium. It acts like a shield to ensure that minimal coil endothelial damage happens because of these flying fragments. The last nuclear fragment is emulsified. Time to deal with the cortex. The posterior capsule is flushed with BSS gently to loosen out some of the cortex which might be sticking onto the posterior capsule. A tiny fragment which is stuck at the side port is noticed once we introduce the irrigation handpiece which is gently expressed out to the main wound. It's important to watch out these side port areas where you know tiny lens fibers or fragments would be sticking on. These could be one of the reasons why in some situations we may end up having chronic uh, low grade post-op uveitis. So please do keep a watch on these side ports. Some lens fibers could be hiding. Whatever little cortex is there is just aspirated out and the bag looks to be clean now. Time to implant the introcal lens. Preloaded single piece hydrophobic lens is being implanted into the bag. I'm going to use the hydro implantation technique wherein my left hand has the irrigation solution which is running, which is keeping the chamber and the bag formed and the lens is gently implanted into the bag. The distal haptic goes in first, followed by the proximal haptic. The last bit of cortex is aspirated. The bag looks to be clean now. Time to close. The side ports in the main incisions are hydrated. That's it, the case is done. 